Hi, this is Deja, and I am doing my tech tip screencast on Toonie Tool. So here we are. We're going to look it up and just show you how easy it is to get to it online, if I can spell it. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So it's this first one that comes up here. Um, it's called Toonie Tool. It is like paid for or sponsored or made, created, I don't know exactly what you call it, by Zygomatic, um, which is also associated and connected with Google Analytics. Um, so as it's loading, I just want to talk to you guys about the ISTE standards. For this one, I would say that it covers the Innovative Designer, which says that students use a variety of technology within a design process to identify and help them solve problems by creating new and useful imaginative solutions. And I also would say that it's um, for the creative communicator who communicates clearly and expresses themselves using different um, forms of technology and stuff. So this would be just like one of the many forms that students would use to um, do projects and present information. Um, so like I said, this is called Tuning Tool. From the get-go, it says at the top, we use cookies to improve your user experience. Um, and this website actually does a really good job of describing and explaining cookies to the user. So we're going to go over that in just a couple minutes. To start out, I'm going to walk you around the website. So as you can see, um, there are five different options up here. We have backgrounds, characters, bubbles, props, and meme text. So let's start out with picking a background. I'm going to pick this one right here. You also have the option to upload a background if there's a picture that you like or you took yourself that you wanted to be the background of your um, meme type thing. Um, you can always upload that as well. Over here is just some blank space. I don't really know exactly why it's there. It seems like a useless, spa useless space to me, but um, it doesn't. You can't if you put something over here, it doesn't show up on your cartoon thing. So we have our background. Then you can add really cool characters. They're black and white, but they're so cool. So we can add this baby. We add the baby, and he's sitting on the wall. Ah, sitting on the wall. Ooh, that's kind of scary. Okay, so then from here, you can delete the object, push it to the front or the back, or flip it if you need to be. Um, lots of different options, and you can always change the size of it as well. So next up, we're gonna add a bubble, a speech bubble or a thought bubble. In this case, we can use a thought bubble. Um, to help express the idea of the character that we just selected. So you double click to add the information and then your guy can pretty much say whatever he wants. Like, um, I think I'm gonna fall. Ah, he's gonna fall. No. And it has a couple different options here for editing the text, like picking a different font if you wanted to do that, or centering it, whatever the case may be that you wanted to do to spice up your text and then again you can move it shrink it see anything over in this area here gets blurred out which is kind of weird but then you can size it change it around move it just so that it fits what's going on next we have the props which are really similar to the characters you can drag and drop them and resize them so that they um, fit your picture better like i said before you can also overlap if you wanted to push this to the back or the front so, pretty cool. Um, finally, the last category we have up here is called meme text. So that just adds some basic text to your stuff, um, to your image. Like you see on like, the SpongeBob memes and stuff, you say, ha 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 ha. And it goes right in the middle, but you can still move that around too. So just another way to add text to the image you're making. Um, Tootie Tool is again, um, kind of owned by Google also by the Zygomatic place. Um, at the very top here, it shows a couple different tabs that look like they would be links to different parts of the tool, but they actually go to completely different websites. So we're just gonna focus on our Toonie tool today. Um, once you finish creating your image, you can go down here to the bottom, or also at the top they have the option to email, print, download, save and share your um, finished result. So to do that you just type in your email, you can 
print it out if you want to hang it around your classroom. You can download it and send it to parents, whatever the case may be. The only thing that might become um, a, a Supacaba FERPA violation is if you would have the students save and share it online if they're under 13 and they don't have these forms of social media. You might not want to even give them that option. Um, down in this area, it shows the keyboard key controls if you wanted to do something like that, but most kids will probably just use a mouse to um, move their stuff around. You don't need an account to use Tuny Tool, which is really nice because that does mean that any kid can use it, even the really younger ones. So it's, in that sense, it um, doesn't break COPPA privacy violate like any privacy laws. Um, but like I said earlier, this website does use cookies, um, and it gives you a really good idea of what cookies are if you wanted to show your students that. It tells you that they don't collect any of your private information like your IP address or your actual name or address and stuff like that. So it is really safe for the kids. Um, but it does point out that this site uses dark cookies. That's through um, Google DoubleClick, which means that they do collect some of your preferences from like your web browser um, just to make like the ads and stuff like here. So it's not I still don't think it's a COPPA violation, but it's just something to give a heads up to your students that that's where they're, they're not watching you, they're just using the cookies to help make the user experience a little bit better. Um, so this tool is just a really interesting way to implement technology in your classroom. It's really easy, anybody can use it. I think it's interesting for younger students, but also like the college age, like I would personally use this to make some memes to send my friends or something like that. But I think it'd be really cool in like a historical role play kind of situation where you give kids a scenario and then you ask them to write like a conversation that might happen between the people that were in this time period or were at a certain historical event or something along those lines. Um, just so you could get an idea of what the kids are feeling and they could have a really fun, engaging way to express their thoughts to you and to the classroom. So as you can see, this website's really easy to use. It's not a lot to explain, um, but it's a really great one. It's a really cool one, and there's a lot of great things you could do with it. Um, so thank you for watching my tech tip screencast on Toonie Tool, and that's all I have for you.